G'day folks, Glenn here sharing my journey restoring my 79 Farm Find V8 Commodore. Done lots of stuff, I've showed that a bit of that in previous episodes. I'm up to the stage where I'm doing the interior. I've got one in the car, I've got three more in the shed. Let's go and get into it. Okay, I don't have a big pro workbench with uh, all the fancy tools. I've got a garage, I've got a bit of carpet and I've got some second-hand door cards. These, uh, look, I chose these door cards because they're all that's available. The interior of that car used to be green and the interior was atrocious when I got the car. So I'm doing a complete interior transplant. So yeah, one, two, three door cards. I'm gonna recard them. I'm gonna, uh, as I've done with the dashboard, I'm gonna color match a few bits and pieces and that will give me a complete interior. These door cards, these door trims um, have a metal top section. Um, which is clipped, if you like, to the masonite, and then the vinyl is glued over the edges. So what I need to do to get things apart is actually try and get the vinyl off the door card without damaging it. And that is actually not too difficult with a door trim that's 40 years old. Just a Bunnings or just a hardware shop um, scraper. Uh, look, something, <laughs> trap for young players, don't work out towards the edge because chances are you will go through the vinyl. Always work along the edge and um, yeah just be really careful obviously stuff that's as old as this and uh, yeah they're not stacked up in wrecking yards anymore you've got to be very careful that you don't go through the edge of the vinyl but uh, yeah anyway this is not too difficult and you can do it on the garage floor at home. I've got the vinyl off the, uh, off the old door card. I've got brand new door cards. These are available for a big variety of uh, makes and models. They're made by Australian door cards in Victoria. Mail order, um, I think like less than 150 bucks to live in. So don't bother trying to make them when you can buy them for uh, not too much money. So... That'll do. I'm gonna use gloves. I'm actually suffering a little bit of dermatitis at the moment. So I wanna keep Minimise my exposure to uh, any more horrible solvents. <clears throat> All right. I'm actually going to spray onto or use the old door card as a bit of a bit of a mask, so I don't get contact adhesive everywhere. But. We've given the contact adhesive about 15 or 20 minutes to, to, to dry, which is what you've got to let it do. So now it's time to actually, um, well, first of all, double check the fit to make sure that everything's where it should be. And I'm pretty happy with this um, because once your contact adhesive sticks, it's stuck. So um, you can see I've just started there. There's no real tricks or techniques to doing this except I like to do one edge like that and then I like to come over and do the opposite edge that way you've you're triple checking if you like your alignment of the door card before it's too late to do anything about it so, all the edges are down and the last thing that I want to do is actually just hammer the uh, the top steels back down onto the card so they don't slip off. And um, that's that's most of the job done. Yay. These early Holden Commodores have got a, uh, a seal against the, uh, the window glass at the top of the door trim and they are notorious for becoming brittle with age. They, um, yeah, they're a bit, yeah, they just shatter after 40 years. So I'd like to replace that. You can get aftermarket replacements. Um, I did buy some a few weeks ago and I was uh, so disappointed with the quality, I threw them in the bin. I didn't even bother with a refund. These are stapled at the factory to the metals. Getting the staples out of metals can be a little bit of a drama, but I find the quick and easy way to do it is... Obviously, you've got to be quite careful with this that you don't go through. Um, all I want to do is just nick the staples. I 
I've sliced the staples. Hopefully I can now remove them without too much effort using a uh, variety of specialist tools. The old uh, $2 screwdriver. And pliers. So I'm just lifting the cut back of the staple and... Oh, jeez. Pulling them out. <clears throat> Well, after a fair bit of struggling, a little bit more than I expected to be honest, I've got the, uh, I've got the old interior seal off. What I'm going to replace it with is this industrial grade stick-on rubber. Um, I will, I'll measure it up to the car later on. I'm not quite sure exactly how long it is, but if I cut it now a little bit too long, I can trim it back later. But, uh, so yeah, that will be stuck to the inside edge of the door. I need to find some some uh, replacement door trim clips and uh, that'll be job done. That folks is the remains of the centre console that was in this car when I bought it. It originally had a green vinyl um, cover over it but yeah I'm not even going to bother with that. What I'm doing instead is I bought another console from the wreckers. Cost me a lot of money but the rear factory manual, I'm going to clean it and I'm going to repaint it. These seats came out of uh, my fellow Unique Cars magazine contributor, Dave Morley's hill climb car. About three years ago, we bought a Holden Commodore, which um, I'm sure some of you viewers have read about in the magazine. The car's just about ready for the track, but yeah, I, uh, I managed to bludge the old seats off Dave for the sum total of a cask of wine. Ah, uh, come on. I've, uh, I've retrofitted air conditioning into this car, so there's a few different components under the dashboard, including a bracket that now fouls on this uh, floor pan insert. So um, I've got to do a bit of hacking to make things fit. I've just realised, I think the um, there's a big sound deadening mat that goes into the car. I think that goes in first. I can't quite remember. But anyway, I will take a look. So, after battling with the soundproofing for a couple of hours this morning, it's in, which means the next thing I've got to do is put in some carpet. Front carpet, gear shift needs to come up through it. It's not cut from the factory, even though you can see there's a bit of a mould there that matches up with the, uh, well, let's call it the, the, the centre tunnel of the car. I need to cut a hole in this to allow the gear shift to poke through. Um, by having a look at the car, by having a look at this, I reckon it's around about sort of two thirds of the way back. However, all this will be covered up in the car by the centre console. So I don't have to be too careful. Um, this is not like a brain surgery, but what I'm gonna do is simply cut a hole using a brand new razor blade. Um, well, I think the best way to do this would be to flip it over and cut through the back in plastic. So yeah, slice that way. Round right about there. I can trim it up later on. And as I said, this will be covered up by the centre console, so it's not super important that it's neat. But no one likes making mistakes, so as I learnt at school all those years ago, measure twice and cut once. Now 
Now I've already had the carpet in the back for a bit of a look. Now I'm actually going to drop it in and make it fit. So um, having the front in place is obviously quite important because I need to be able to tuck the back bit of carpet under the front bit of carpet. So uh, yeah, there'll be a bit of mucking around of course, just like there was with the front, but hopefully in an hour or so I'll be um, ready for another beer. <coughs> Just like the front, the uh, rear section of carpet is held into the car from the factory with um, these little mushroom clips, press studs, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll drop a couple of those in before I start trimming the carpet to the correct size to put the, uh, the seal caps in place. Sometimes it's easier to fold the carpet back to uh, to find the anchor hole and then cut the back side of the carpet rather than coming through from above. So because I've got the hole there, I'm going to cut out a little wedge of carpet like that. And that hopefully will. Yep, good. Got it almost right. That will line up with the hole underneath. So yay. <clears throat> Alright, it's been a big day. But carpets in the car, I've got the little holes cut for the, um, the seat anchorage points. I've got the soundproofing under the carpet, of course. I've got one kick panel in, the driver's side kick panel in. It's sitting quite neatly, so I'm uh, quite pleased with that. Um, I want to plop this in, and then I want to go have a beer. But I do need to get some seats into the car first. But I've trimmed back the edge of the carpet, so all I really need to do is... Fingers crossed. Do that. Yay. Woohoo. Oh, all right. Let's see how close I am with these little carpet holes. <clears throat> or not. Get in there, you little bundle. This is just about the last step in my Farm Find Commodore's interior restoration, the centre console. Um, it's been a pretty big couple of days, actually, doing all the carpet and the soundproofing and um, installing the door cards and putting fresh seats in it, all that. Um, there's still a few things to do. There's a few little issues with the headlining that I need to fix, but uh, sitting in this car with a lovely, if I say so myself, beautifully restored interior, <sighs> yeah, it's really um, giving me a bit of a lift actually. The outside of the car is hoary as all hell as we know, but the inside of the car, I wanted it nice and neat, I wanted it nice and tidy, so yeah, I put a fair bit of effort into restoring things. So yeah, getting really close. Anyway, I'm GT, thanks for watching, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.